Duke and Duchess of Sussex can finally move into their apartment at Kensington Palace after its multi-million pound facelift, Mail Online can reveal. Builders have completed one pound and forty pence million worth of repairs on the roof and replaced the windows of their 21-room apartment one, on the west side of the palace. And the scaffolding and white tarpaulin, which has shrouded the building for most of the past year, has now been removed. The finished building work means that Harry and Meghan could soon be neighbors of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who live in apartment 1A. The flats even have adjoining doors, which mean that the brothers and their wives will be able to visit each other without stepping outdoors. And there will be plenty of room for the couple's two dogs, the Duchess's old friend Guy and a new black Labrador they bought recently, reportedly called Oz. Since their engagement last November, and wedding this May, Harry and Meghan have lived in Harry's bachelor pad Nottingham Cottage. The Bija Cottage was where Harry proposed to Meghan on one knee during a cozy night in as they roasted a chicken. Yet, behind the scenes, plans were underway to find the newlyweds a larger apartment. When the Queen's cousin Richard, Duke of Gloucester, whose three children were grown up, offered to vacate apartment one, Harry was thrilled. But that meant finding a new home for the Gloucesters, a problem solved with the departure of the Queen's private secretary Sir Christopher Gelt. Now the couple can move into the property, which has been home to the Gloucesters since 1972 and where they still currently live. However, it will mean a change of lifestyle for the Sussexes, who currently live in relative simplicity without staff. Meghan has already put her mark on the cottage, which has an open fire, cashmere throughs, scented candles and fresh flowers. And both she and Harry, who have kept a close eye on renovations, are expected to put similar touches to apartment one. It was in 2014, in an interview with Tatler magazine, that Princess Michael first suggested that apartment one would make the perfect home for Harry. The Gloucesters had already offered the apartment to William and Kate but they had plumped for Princess Margaret's old home. She said at the time, they are rattling around this huge space and I think Prince Harry might go there. Then they'd be next door to each other, very good move. Meghan has come a long way since her childhood home in California, she lived with her mother Doria in a second floor flat in the heart of Los Angeles. Ironically, her new home once belonged to the first Duke of Sussex, Prince Augustus Frederick, sixth son and ninth child of George III. It was divided into two apartments in 1955 when Princess Marina, Duchess of Kent, moved in with her children, creating apartments 1 and 1A. On their first major tour since the royal wedding, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have revealed details of their action-packed tour around Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. The mammoth 16-day publicly funded voyage which includes 76 engagements such as gumboot throwing in New Zealand and beach yoga, begins on October 16 when they touch down in Sydney. Once they are welcomed by Governor General Peter Cosgrove and his wife Lynn, Harry and Meghan will have a chance to meet some true blue icons, koalas. They will be allowed to pat them. However, they will not be allowed to cuddle them due to strict anti-koala cuddling rules in NSW. You can cuddle in Queensland and pet in New South Wales, Harry and Meghan's private secretary Sam Cohen explained. The happy couple will then jet off to Melbourne, Dubbo in NSW and Queensland's Fraser Island. Announcing the tour, Prince Harry and the Duchess Meghan said they want to meet as many Australians as possible. They will also fly over to Fiji and Tonga between October 23rd and 26th and spend four days in New Zealand after leaving Sydney on October 28th. The newlyweds, who are on their first Commonwealth tour and first major tour since their wedding in May, want to meet as many locals as possible on their trip, which has scheduled four public walkabouts. There is a long history of the friendship between the royal family and Australia, Fiji. Tonga and New Zealand and their links with the UK extensive, Ems Cohen said. The Duke and Duchess are very much looking forward to experiencing the unique customs and cultures of these four Commonwealth countries and have asked that this tour allows them to meet as many Australians, Fijians, Tongans and New Zealanders as possible.
Together they look forward to building an enduring relationship with the people of the region. Harry's primary motivation to visit Australia is to patronize the Sydney 2018 Invictus Games, an Olympic-style event for disabled and ill-service people. To officially welcome the Games to the city, Prince Harry, Prime Minister Scott Morrison and athletes will scale the Sydney Harbour Bridge to plant the Invictus flag. The Duke and Duchess will also attend the game's opening and closing ceremonies, the cycling time trials in the Royal Botanic Gardens, the basketball final and the sailing at Farm Cove. The Duke and Duchess are excited to see Sydney fully embrace the Invictus spirit and support the competitors across a range of sports at some of the city's most iconic venues, Ems Cohen said. This year's games will emphasize the integral role played by servicemen and women and their families and friends and the Royal Highnesses will spend time with a number of the competitors' supporters as they cheer them on from the sidelines. The Royal Couple will also fly to Dubbo for a day trip where they will visit the Royal Flying Doctor Service and learn about the drought from a farming family at their property before attending a community barbecue. In Melbourne they will take a short ride on an iconic tram to South Melbourne Beach, where they will take part in a beach cleanup with school students. The Duke and Duchess fly to Fraser Island for the day, where they will learn about conservation from traditional elders and rangers and do another public walkabout at Kingfisher Bay. In Sydney they will meet koalas and conservationists at Taranga Zoo, visit a youth mental health group at Bondi Beach and see a rehearsal of the Bangra Dance Company. After the Invictus Games closing ceremony, the royal couple will fly out of Sydney Airport bound for New Zealand. Much of the tour outside the Invictus Games will focus on youth groups working to deal with the social, economic and environmental challenges facing Australia and the region. The Duke is particularly keen to highlight these youth-led initiatives in his new role as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador and to shine a light on the work and aspirations of young people, the spokeswoman said. The professional, who has photographed the royal family for over 40 years, said he sees a massive change in Prince Harry and said the royal is very protective of Meghan. Speaking on Yahoo News series The Royal Box, Arthur spoke about what he has observed since the May royal wedding. He said, I can see a massive change. He's, Harry's, become more aloof. He would always have a good relationship with the media. He would always engage in some way. That's completely stopped now. He's just controlled. He seems to have matured into a senior statesman of the royal family now. Maybe he sees that the time for joshing with Usain Bolt or hugging the Jamaican Prime Minister or getting sprayed with paint in Barbados. Maybe it's time to stop now. Arthur said that he was in Ireland with Prince Harry recently, and they went to Croke Park, the Dublin home of the Gaelic sport hurling. Arthur said that Prince Harry was offered the opportunity to hit the ball but declined, despite his dad Prince Charles doing it the year before. He said, there would have become a time when he would have hit that ball out of the ground I would assure you. Arthur also spoke of how Prince Harry treats Meghan Markle and said the royal feels the need to be very protective. Arthur said, now that he's married, he's very protective of Meghan. He's changed a bit yeah. I mean he's still hairy and he's still lovely and he's still the most popular member of the royal family. And the photographer gushed about Prince Harry's incredible way with children. He said, Harry is one of the greatest members of the royal family I've ever seen with kids. I mean they are all pretty great with children, but he's really good. He will not leave a child till he gets that child to smile. And if he's not smiling or if he's miserable, Harry will make him smile. He's amazing. I know living next door to William and he's seen William's children, of course he's great, he's Uncle Harry and he's very, very loving with those children and very involved with them. But of course he would love his own children. And I would be pretty sure both him and Meghan are planning to have a baby and family pretty quickly. Because it's no secret he wanted to get married and he wanted to have his own family and I don't think it'll be too long before it happens. Arthur said that he's covered a number of romances in the royal but he's never seen a couple more tactile than them. He said, they never stop holding hands. Even when she was walking to church on Christmas Day, she, Meghan, was arm in arm with him, 
she wouldn't let him go. He's, Harry's, always aware where she is, that she's always kept informed. Whispering in her ear if she's a bit hesitant about what to do next. He is very loved up and he's very much prepared to show it to everybody, this is the woman I love and this is the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. While some royal skeptics have speculated over whether the royal marriage will go the distance, Arthur has no doubts. He said, they've not been married long, but it looks like it's going to last. <laughs>